Did you know that even mild dehydration, which is as low as 2% loss of total body weight, can lead to a decrease in endurance performance by up to 10 to 20%? And did you know that dehydration can impair cognitive function, affecting decision-making, concentration, and reaction time? And did you know that studies have shown that dehydration equivalent to 3 to 4% of body weight loss can lead to even more extreme cognitive deficits comparable to those observed with a blood alcohol concentration of 0.08%, which is the legal limit for intoxication in many states. Clearly this isn't great if you're trying to navigate a mountain bike course, read a map during an ultra run, or just trying to calculate your nutrition and hydration during a long event. Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Barker with the Natural Athletes Clinic. I'm going to tell you about my four rules for hydration that I follow as an athlete so that you don't get into trouble while you're out training and competing. I mean, wouldn't it be a drag if you missed the podium by just a few seconds just because you lost about 10 to 20% of your performance due to some mild dehydration? And aside from missing the podium, there's a lot of other negative stuff that can happen because of insufficient hydration. Dehydration can also reduce strength and power output. Studies have found that even a 1% to 2% decrease in body weight due to dehydration can lead to a noticeable decrease in muscular strength and power, impacting performance in activities like weightlifting, sprinting, and jumping. Dehydration impairs the body's ability to regulate temperature, increasing the risk of heat-related illnesses such as heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Clearly, this is bad news. Dehydration can also prolong the recovery process after exercise by impairing the body's ability to repair damaged tissues and replenish energy stores. Dehydrated muscles are more prone to injury due to reduced elasticity and increased susceptibility to cramping. And dehydration can also impair neuromuscular function leading to coordination deficits and an increased risk of falls or accidents during physical activity. Lastly, dehydration can strain the cardiovascular system, leading to an increased heart rate and a decreased cardiac output. This can make it harder for the body to deliver oxygen to working muscles and remove metabolic byproducts, further compromising athletic performance. Okay, hopefully by now you understand just how important hydration is to your performance. Now that we've got that all out of the way, let's get into my four rules for hydration that I always follow so that I don't become part of those statistics. All right, rule number one, calculate your daily water intake. A commonly recommended, very general guideline for daily water intake is to drink half of your body weight in ounces. As an example, if you weigh 160 pounds, aim to consume about 80 ounces of fluid each day. Easy, right? Now, remember, this is the bare minimum recommendation. You're going to increase this depending on the heat, the humidity, your exercise intensity, your duration, etc. But half your body weight in ounces is where you should start each day regardless. Now remember, hydration is a process. It can take several hours to get fully rehydrated once you become dehydrated. You can't just chug a glass of water and all of a sudden you're hydrated. So this is why I like following the general half your body weight in ounces rule because then you can slowly increase it on hot sweaty days as needed. Side note, you probably need to hydrate nearly the same as you do in the summer as you do in the winter. We've got a video on that one too. I'll link it below. All right, rule number two, supplement with electrolytes. Electrolytes play a crucial role in athletic performance because they help maintain proper fluid balance, regulate nerve and muscle function, and support hydration. During exercise, the body loses electrolytes through sweat, and maintaining the right balance is essential for preventing dehydration and maintaining optimal hydration levels. Here's just a few of the reasons why electrolytes are so important for athletes. Electrolytes such as potassium, sodium, and chloride, and magnesium help regulate the body's fluid balance. Electrolytes are involved in muscle contraction and relaxation, keeping the muscles working smoothly and efficiently. They also help with the absorption and retention of fluids in the body, helping you stay hydrated. Think of electrolytes as making the water sticky, so to speak. It's easier for your body to hold on to water if it contains some electrolytes. Some electrolytes, such as magnesium and calcium, are also involved in energy metabolism and ATP production. ATP is the primary energy currency of the body, and maintaining proper electrolyte balance supports efficient energy production during exercise. Because of all this, if I'm training for longer than an hour or so in any really type of exercise, I'll use an electrolyte solution in my water. They're that important. Okay, rule number three, coffee and tea count towards your intake. Yep. Contrary to popular belief, coffee and tea can contribute to your daily fluid intake. Now, we used to tell people that anything with caffeine in it would lead to dehydration. Well, that's not really true. While caffeine does have a diuretic or water-wasting property to it, 
the overall hydrating effect of these beverages outweighs their mild diuretic effect. And if you're a regular consumer of caffeine, it kind of loses its diuretic effect over time. It'll eventually weaken. Regardless, it's always important to consume caffeinated beverages in moderation and balance them with water to ensure optimal hydration. Okay, rule number four, say no to plastic water bottles. Now, this rule doesn't necessarily have an impact on your hydration and performance, but it's important because of the health and environmental risks associated with plastics. Plastic water bottles, while convenient, may contain harmful chemicals like BPA, known as bisphenol A, and phthalates, which can leach into the water, especially when those bottles are left out exposed to the heat or sunlight. These chemicals are known as endocrine disruptors, meaning they can disrupt the normal balance of hormones, particularly reproductive hormones like testosterone and estrogen, potentially leading to various health problems down the road. Opting for reusable, healthier alternatives when you're at home, such as a stainless steel or glass water bottles, reduces your exposure to these toxins and also helps minimize environmental impact. Shop for a BPA-free water bottle to use while you're out on the go or training. Lastly, consider investing in a quality filtration system in your home or use a filtered water pitcher that can help remove all those harmful substances, ensuring that you're hydrating with clean and safe water. Okay, there you have it, my top four rules for hydration that I follow every day as an athlete. I do this so that I can easily eliminate any avoidable performance limiters. So often, it's the seemingly small tweaks that can give us the biggest performance boost. Now, I put a link down below to what I use for my daily electrolyte formula and also my other favorite go-to electrolyte slash energy formula for days when I'm struggling a little bit. Lastly, I also put a link to a recipe for making your very own natural custom sports drink down below. I'm curious to know what some of your rules for hydration are. What do you find works best for you? Leave a comment down below. Lastly, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and stay hydrated.